Now, President Joe Biden's administration is feeling the heat after a lawsuit was launched this week seeking to halt directives that extend federal sex discrimination protections ranging from transgender girls participating in school sports to the use of school and workplace bathrooms that align with a person's gender identity. I'm joined by co-founder of Save Women's Sport Australasia, Catherine Devers. Catherine, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, 3,000 US medical professionals are currently suing the Biden administration over their gender identity mandate, which aims to redefine sex essentially. What could this gender identity mandate mean for medical practitioners? Um, so what happens is the medical practitioners are expected to instantly affirm the children that come into their care. And what this means is that they are pushed onto a medicalised pathway uh, where they are given puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones and eventually ending up in extreme body modification surgeries. And all of these steps from puberty blockers through to the surgeries are irreversible. Um, now, we know that once we put children on this pathway, that uh, the rates of self-harm and suicide do go up. And long term, um, there's evidence out of the Karolinska Institute that rates of suicide are 20 times higher than the rest of the population. So to ask doctors to provide care that leads to these outcomes is absolutely unethical and, and unlawful. Well, that's also happening in, to, to a smaller extent, you would say, in Australia, because we have got these uh, clinics designed for children in a number of capital cities, and you're having children from a very young age re receiving hormones. You've got a push to have uh, girls under 17 to get double mastectomies. Is this happening in Australia? We're just not as uh, aware of, of this uh, phenomenon in the medical profession? It's absolutely happening here in Australia and there are hundreds if not thousands of children on this medicalised pathway. Uh, for instance, last year we know that 8,000 girls under the age of 18 had their breasts removed. We know that that is happening here in Australia as well. Wow. So those stats are for overseas, obviously, that those thousands don't reflect here, but that those sort of surgeries are also happening in Australia. That's incredible. Now, also yes. in Australia, Queensland police have recently celebrated Wear It Purple Day to demonstrate <laughs> to the LGBTQIA community that they are supportive. Uh, Queensland police members wore purple shoelaces as well as ribbons and patches to show their support. Is there a downside to this activism, Catherine? Look, absolutely. I spoke um, at length with a police officer from Queensland uh, last weekend and about their concerns about how this gender identity ideology is being embedded into our society. So Wear It Purple Day is just another example of how they're trying to get it into our schools, workplaces and institutions. Last year, 750 organisations participated. Uh, they talk about queering of spaces. Um, they target our children. 600,000 children around Australia were sent packs from Wear It Purple Day. They target children from the age of six mm. upwards. And this is a very dangerous ideology that, as I mentioned before, can end up with children being... Um, being medicalised, it destroys women's rights by removing our boundaries and it causes physical and emotional harm to children. I mean, it's glamorising extreme body modification. If you go to the Wear It Purple website, there is a testimony from a young girl who has removed her breasts and has photos of herself post-operative on that website. So when we see our police wow. forces who have a code of conduct, conduct where they are supposed to be impartial, unbiased and not um, and properly use public funds, and when they're paying to be involved in these sorts of um, uh, strategies to embed gender identity ideology, uh, it's deeply concerning. Absolutely, absolutely, it's very much a political and, and a contentious area. You could argue, and what business do the police have getting involved in that sort of activism? And that sort of activism is even more advanced. In the UK, North Wales Police has officers whose 
role is to support young people struggling with their gender identity or sexuality. One of their officers said in an article, we'll keep talking about diversity until we don't need to talk about diversity anymore. We just need to change people's perceptions of what's normal um, and what's different and, and until we're all integrated. Again, I mean, that's fine, but how is that in any way something that the police force should be involved in. If an individual wants to get involved in that sort of activism, then good luck to you. But to, to be doing that in, in a police uniform sends a completely different message. Um, now, there's a parliamentary petition to save women's sport. I know you're involved with this. You've got 24 hours to get yes. 5,000 signatures. You're calling yes. on the Australian Parliament to protect women's sport for biological females. Just tell us quickly about what this fight is and why we need to protect women's sport. Well, sport is just uh, one manifestation of how gender identity ideology is being embedded into our society. And this is where we have sports organisations who are seeking to destroy the category of sex um, for sports competitions and replace it with that of gender identity. So we're calling on our parliamentarians um, to protect women's sports. So we invite everyone to go to our website. There's a link to the um, to the Australian Parliament House e-petition and invite every Australian who's concerned about this to, to please sign. Um, and further to that, if you're interested in this area, uh, come and find us at the Coalition for Biological Reality. There's a lot of resources there. There's a lot of information and we really need to start pushing back on what this ideology is doing to our society. Catherine, thank you so much for, for your time. You speak so eloquently on this issue and it takes great courage to, to speak about this issue. Thanks, Rita. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.